Hello and welcome to this video. Here you see a four-wheel bicycle combination lock and I got it from the caretaker of the company that I'm working for. They wanted to get rid of all the old bicycles so they sticked notes on them and if the note was still there after four weeks they recycled the bicycles. And I asked the, the uh, caretaker uh, to get all the broken locks. But most of the locks were still attached to the bicycle and that was the only one where the bicycle was secured to, uh, to some other objects um, and so they had to cut it. And that's why I wanna show it uh, to you and because the locking mechanism is, uh, yeah, has some interesting features. So, as I said, they um, cut through the uh, the, the chain uh, with a bolt cutter, I guess, and so th these are the marks. And I thought that this is a uh, very tough material, so hardened. And I wanted to get rid of uh, the other side of the chain as well, so that I have uh, something nice here to play with without the chain. And I used a saw, and you can see here from the marks um, on the left hand side. Um, you can see the marks from the saw and actually it was not too difficult. It was hardened so it was was tough to get through the uh, surface but once I, I managed to get through the surface it wasn't a big deal. So it was a yeah, it was a matter of uh, 20 seconds actually and the rest I just twisted uh, in the vise and then it broke here at the place where it, does, where, it does, where it was welded together. Well, but I want to show you the locking mechanism. It's interesting. So this, uh, this just came apart. Um, uh, yeah, I want to show you the locking mechanism. As there is no combination uh, with this lock, um, I of course wanted to, to decode it. And so I, yeah, I tried to decode it as if there are no false gates or if there are false gates so I, I tried to, to feel just the, the difference um, of, the, of the clicks when I pull on the, on the bolt and turn the wheel but it was kind of strange because every time I, I turn the wheel you see that the bolt is, uh, is going to the left and then it's, it's going outwards again so it retracts and, and releases and it's actually really difficult to, to find the, the wheel that is currently binding because this exact uh, scheme is, is valid for, for, all, for all the wheels. So it, it, it behaves almost identical regardless of which wheel you turn. It always retracts and goes out again. And I, I tried to, to, to turn without um, Pulling on the on the bolt and and try to feel if it uh, goes further. I try to to pull and to to see if um, if there is more or less play um, on e and on uh, each number. But it was uh, kind of strange. There was not so much feedback. And also, if you if you think you you feel the turning itself, it's not true. It just turns uh, on the outside wheel. But for the inside wheel, you have to, to turn a little bit more. So they have a play. Inside and outside wheel are not uh, tight connect. Do not have a tight connection. So I, I tried. I tried pulling and, and turning a little bit to see if uh, if I can um, if I can see a, a reaction here on the wheel. I tried almost everything to to get feedback. And yeah, I, I played around. I don't know, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes, I don't know. So if I play with a lock, the time just passes and uh, I don't really count the, the hours. And yeah, suddenly I, I felt something changing and I cannot really describe what it was. It was uh, just a feeling and in the last minutes I just uh, yeah did something, I felt how it turns and well, suddenly it opened, <laughs> and that was actually a big surprise. Um, 
but yeah, I don't know. Either it was pure luck and it just opened by, <laughs> by accident or I just, uh, I don't know, I got some feeling that I cannot describe. Something that changes between the numbers that uh, yeah, intuitively um, <laughs> managed me uh, to, to, to turn the wheels to the right combination. Yeah, but uh, as it was open, I, I started to um, analyze the lock and see what, uh, what feedback, uh, yeah, what, what mechanism causes this strange feedback. And I will show you that just in a minute. But before, I want to show you what Abus, how Abus advertises uh, this lock on their website. So here is the Abus website. It's the Tresor Chain Catena Combo 1385. It has a security rating 6 out of 15, which is appropriate for this lock, I would say. And what you don't see so often is that the locking mechanism itself is uh, tougher than the rest of the lock. So most of the time uh, this is the weak point, but uh, at this lock uh, uh, actually the chain, I would say, is the, is the weak point. So, and uh, the interesting part comes here. Because they say the Abel's combination cylinder protects against pull picking and manipulation of the combination locking mechanism so thieves can't feel the combination clicking into place. Yeah, that's true. I still don't know yet uh, why why this lock is actually open now. Um, was it just pure luck or a little bit of intuition, uh, intuition, sorry, of intuition and, and feeling? So, yeah, still don't know. But um, I will now show you what they did to make it uh, tough against uh, pull picking. Now let's reveal the secrets of this lock. It's open now and we can have a look inside. You can see the, the, the first wheel, the first inner wheel. And you can see the, the gate here, that's a true gate. And when I turn it, it's all solid now. And there is one false gate, it's a little bit smaller. And that's it. So only one false gate and one true gate. And when I, when I turn the wheel, the outer wheel, you can see the inner wheel doesn't turn immediately. You have to turn it a little bit more, and so this this also destroys um, a good good feeling uh, for for the wheel, because there is always a lag when you turn the outside wheel. But now to the f um, to the strange feedback when you turn the wheel, so that the bolt um, repeatedly goes in and out. Therefore, I need to give you a little bit more light to shine inside. So I improved the uh, light situation and changed some camera settings. I hope you can see now what I mean. Currently this is the true gate in the wheel and when I turn the wheel you can see the little bump here on the inside and there's the other bump and between each and every number there's this little bump on the inside just like here and this causes the, the bolt to be pushed inwards and additionally the whole wheel uh, moves inwards when you when you turn it you can see it now and it's because there is a little bump here um, on the on the upper part as well. So this little click here means that between the clicks the whole wheel goes inwards and additionally we have the the bump at, at the at the inside part. So this causes the bolt to go inwards every time you turn the wheel and completely uh, destroys the feedback to to feel a difference between two numbers. So again, when I move in the bolt, 
and I zero it. When I uh, pull on the bolt now, you can see how it is moved inwards between two numbers. And then released again. So this makes it really difficult to feel a difference between two numbers and also the fact that the outside wheel and the inside wheel are not um, tightly connected makes it difficult to feel how much play currently you have and which which wheel is actually currently binding. It's, it's really difficult. I, I will keep this lock as it is. I will not destroy it. And I will play with it uh, once in a while. And maybe I can improve my, my feeling for this lock so that I can someday reliably uh, decode it. Let's see. So, that's the end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed um, this little exploration. And yeah, thank you much for watching. Happy picking and decoding and bye bye.